Hello, my lovely friends. How are you doing? I hope everything is going great on your side, especially your learning, studying your English. Great. So, as you remember, last session we talked about two very important models for writing. So we covered one of them, and now it's time to go for the second type of writing an essay in order to understand how we can understand which one is which and how we can develop any of them based on the kind of question we receive. So if you are ready and excited, I am too. So let's get started. But before that, I think you've forgotten something. Please smash that like button. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so because of the fact that uh, this way I understand that you're watching me and that means uh, the world to me to have the audience uh, worldwide that is really cool so please smash that uh, like button in order to give me that kind of motivation that is needed to continue producing and spending time doing this kind of activities so thank you in advance and let's get started Today, we're going to talk about thesis, let's say. The thesis, let us say, is different. You're a lawyer. Remember, in the previously mentioned kind of essay, you were the judge. But now, actually, you've uh, changed your role. Not a judge. You're not a judge any further. You're not looking at both sides. You're looking at one side. Likewise, give the reader the context of the background. The first sentence of these essays, I mean, these both of these two ones, I mean, thesis and argument-led ones, could look exactly the same. So, by reading the first sentence, nobody would understand which of is, uh, you know, uh, thesis and which of them is the argument one. And, um, yeah, but where it is different in the thesis-led is that we need a personal opinion. So, your personal opinion is really important and that really matters because, as I said, you need to state your opinion. Otherwise, you are not going to achieve a high band score in your task achievement uh, parameter. But where it is different in the thesis led is that we need a personal opinion. We need to know that you've already made a decision about what you think. So, what you think is really important. Can you give the reader an impersonal opinion? Can you give one? Yes, you can. But you have to make sure you will give a personal opinion as well. So it is okay for you to say some people think like this, the other people believe like that. But I think like this. So your personal opinion has to be clearly stated. Then what do you do? Body paragraphs will be a little bit different from the one that we covered in the previous class. In an argument let the previous class, you will have two paragraphs, two body paragraphs, of course. One is about advantages. The other one might be about disadvantages. So if we talk about the advantages of studying abroad, we might talk about education, we can talk about new cultures, and we can talk about the chance to be more mature or independent. We can talk all of those in one body paragraph, in an argument let, so the advantages. However, in a thesis let, each one of these is going to become a supportive paragraph. A smaller paragraph, but a supportive paragraph. So a little bit different. You might see one introduction paragraph, two body paragraphs, and one conclusion paragraph. So the style, the number of paragraphs would be the same as the argument-led one. So take a look at the conclusion part. How can we conclude our essay? We rephrase and we paraphrase ourselves. And we summarize the points, the key points. Take a look at the conclusion that we have here. In conclusion, going abroad is becoming very popular. I think it is a good idea for children to go overseas because it increases the chances of getting a better education, gain access to different cultures, and becoming more mature. So as you see, we are summarizing the key points here. 
Do you need to give examples in your essay? That varies, but you do not need to give a lot of examples. Just giving one or two specific examples will do. So take a look at what we have here. Known it. If you are a very good writer with over 300 words in 40 minutes, you can give examples in your essay. However, if you have a hard time writing over 300 words in 40 minutes and being accurate with your grammar, I would say that you should avoid many specific uh, examples. So take a look. Many. It doesn't mean that you are not required to give examples because giving an example is a very nice and logical way to support what exactly you are talking about. So just go for it, but do not overuse examples because that way you will have some problems with your time management. When it comes to the introduction, no surprise here because it is really similar to the previous one. I mean, argument-led one. In recent decades, there has been tremendously economic development. Is that true? Yes. However, the gap between the rich and the poor nations remains considerable. Is that true? Definitely it is. What structure am I using here? I am using concession and contrast. So you can say, however, there are a lot of poor people in the world. So actually you say that a lot of people make a lot of money. However, a lot of people are suffering from financial problems in the world as well. So I'm saying something true. However, something else is true. Look how we can make it. You know, a lot of people are rich these days, but a lot of people are poor as well. So both of them are okay. And in order to make that kind of idea, which is uh, contrasting, I'm going to use however. You can use concession and contrast in your introduction, your body paragraphs, as well as your conclusion. You can use it everywhere, okay? So there is not a specific place to go for it. But as far as you've got that kind of chance to elaborate on the uh, main idea and, uh, you know, develop that kind of argument, I would rather go for body paragraphs or maybe conclusion because everything is quite clear. Don't try to show the reader how smart you are. Don't write like a writer. Try to be clear. So it's very important. And exactly I see a lot of candidates just fall for this very specific trend, which is not wise at all. Because they want to stand out from the crowd. They think that if they go for some very difficult and you know, challenging ideas, they will look somehow sophisticated and that will bring them extra scores. But it is not true because clarity talks first when it comes to writing uh, IELTS essay. So go for clarity and simplicity. Okay, Do not look for some very beautiful or fancy structures or ideas. Because sometimes you say that, okay, that is very clear. Well, I want something very special. I want something to be cool, you know, to stand out from the crowd, to be unique. But that is a very bad debate. So do not go for it. Just instead go for a clarity. Because your examiner, your reader, needs to understand what exactly you are telling them. And that is all. You're not going to be given extra scores because of having some beautiful and sophisticated ideas. Not at all. Why would you use might, may, could, can? That is very important because I advise uh, you use that or use them. You know, the models might, may, could, can. Why? Because to show something that can happen. Don't make a statement sound like 100% or oh, zero. Show that things are possible by saying maybe it could, maybe it can. That is very important because as you have already understood within the pandemic and everything like coronavirus stuff, nothing in the world is stable. So before, you know, having those kind of problems, I used to tell my students this, that never have that kind of judgmental or, you know, the sure, sure ideas about things. Just go for models because they will show the probability, the possibility, the likelihood. Because we are not sure of anything, even ourselves, let alone, you know, other stuff in the world. A system of a wealthy nation could be very beneficial. It could be. 
because it's maybe the best chance to develop. That is beautiful and logical. The first sentence of each paragraph, we should tell the reader what the topic is. That is our topic sentence, which contains our main idea. Tell the reader what you think about the topic. Exactly, you introduce the topic. If I just read the first sentence of your body paragraph, I would be able to tell the reader or the other people what exactly this body paragraph is going to explore. And keep your ideas short, clear, and well-linked and well-signal. Remember, if you use these things like because, for instance, moreover, in contrast, despite this, I like that, on the one hand, on the other hand, it helps everyone understand your writing before getting into that. Imagine you just write something like in contrast, and I haven't started reading the, uh, you know, your sentence. But as far as I read that in contrast, I would understand, I, I, I would expect something to be in contrast with what you've already mentioned beforehand. So that is a very nice and powerful signal telling me that, oh, oh, you are going to read something different. Okay, guys, now we would like to continue our discussion, but in more detail, because we want to see how we can exactly specify, uh, you know, different kinds of points or items to our thesis-led essay structure. So, let's get into that. Remember, there is no big difference between thesis-led and argument-led. The very big difference between these two ones uh, actually, uh, is very related to your personal opinion that has to be stated when it comes to thesis-led one. The only difference is the organization where the information is. The first paragraph will be obviously the introduction. So, what do we want to have in the introduction? The context. Personal opinion. Usually, we're written following the impersonal ones. Uh, no personal opinion in the body paragraph. So, when it comes to body paragraphs, for body paragraph 1, we've got two or three points. And for body paragraph 2, we've got two or three other points. Three points would be a lot. I would rather uh, encourage you to go for two points. And the conclusion is the restatement of what exactly you've said in your introduction. So let's get into work in order to understand what exactly we mean when we just uh, introduce that kind of timing and, you know, specification. So thesis-led sample. Take a look at the question. Some people say that what children watch influences their behavior. Others believe the amount of time they spend on television influences their behavior most. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Firstly, let me know whether it is an argument-led uh, one or a thesis-led. So, of course, it is a thesis-led one because your opinion matters and you have to just go for it. So, as far as your opinion has to be expressed, you need to go for thesis-led, um, you know, essay. So, take a look at the model answer that uh, we are given here. So, the model answer would go like this. In the introduction paragraph, while it is true that watching TV affects children, it is difficult to determine whether it is the content of the programs or the length of time spent watching them that has a more significant impact on children. It seems to me that, although the amount of time does affect youngsters, it is the content of the programs that has a more marked influence on them. So, take a look how beautifully we've designed our introduction. That is a very good one, a very powerful introduction, because it contains everything that it has to. So, take a look. We've got that kind of background statement. We introduced the topic, and of course, we are expressing our own opinion. Huh? It seems to me that that is very nice. Let's get into the first body paragraph here. On the one hand, the consequences of watching TV for long periods of time can be deleterious. Firstly, the longer children are exposed to TV programs, the more likely it is for them to become addicted to watching television. 
When children become over-reliant on television for entertainment, they might neglect engagement in outdoor activities. Take a look how beautifully we are making everything to, uh, you know, uh, seem uh, logical and rational. That is very important. Uh, you're just saying that if it, it is like this, it is like that. Might, may, the more likely you're just giving that kind of possibility. Okay, this you're referring to what exactly you've talked about previously may result in a sedentary lifestyle that is highly detrimental to their physical health. More importantly, so another point, ex excessive TV watching impairs children's communication abilities, so they find it hard to play or live in harmony with others. Beautiful structure and phrases are being used here. So you can say find it harder to, find it easy to, find it possible to. As a result, remember I just taught you how to use it in a sentence in our previous classes. Children would feel discouraged from having real interactions with people around them if they spent a huge amount of time in front of the screen, which may hinder their development of social skills. Very logical, very powerful. So you can see that the you know, argument is really fundamental. And everything that you need to be convinced is written out there. So let's move on and talk about the next body paragraph that starts with on the other hand, which gives me that kind of, you know, idea that we are going to see everything from the other side of the point as well. It is the, broad, it is the broadcasted images that have the most direct effects on young viewers. Firstly, in most countries, the majority of TV shows present glamorized depictions of inappropriate materials such as violence, drug abuse, or casual sex. Thus, youngsters may adopt unhealthy habits and improper behavior. So you have just introduced the topic and you're trying to develop everything related to that. For example, they might fall under the impression that the use of alcoholic drinks is fashionable. Without being aware of the health risks, they carry and later end up consuming these substances. Besides, in our modern consumer society, commercials also affect how children behave. On very young viewers, could be easily swayed by captivating advertisements for junk food or video games. Products whose target audience includes children and so may pastor their parents to buy these goods impulsively. So very powerful, very strong. So why? Because we are using different kinds of arguments in order to support what we have already mentioned and take a look at the range of vocabulary and lexical items that have been used here and of course the gram grammatical points and the structures are fundamentally outstanding because not only a great range has been introduced but also the majority of sentences are error-free actually i didn't quite catch any so the last part in conclusion, although both factors have their own implications, I believe the element with more considerable impacts on children is the content. Hence, parental involvement is essential in controlling children's TV viewing habits and in shaping a child's value to help them enter adult life with a healthy mind. So, as you see, in conclusion, we are just restating our introduction but in a very artistic manner so that it wouldn't sound that much repetitive or you know monotonous so as far as i am just uh, trying to paraphrase everything and summarize the key points here we are good to go so here we go with the comments written by the examiner so 360 words Honestly speaking, before getting into the comments, I would believe that it was a very good and powerful one. I really liked the essay. So let's see what the examiner has to tell us. 
Task response or TA, task achievement, it was, this was an interesting task question and you answered the question fully. I cannot improve on the technique which you use. That's perfect. You stated your position clearly in the introduction and consistently throughout the essay. Remember, if you're in need of getting a high band score, it has to be written for you as well because your opinion has to be stated throughout the whole essay. Not only the introduction, not only the conclusion, but the whole essay. The beginning of paragraph 3 and your conclusion were the ideal places to restate your opinion. All the points which you mentioned were relevant and fully developed. And I have to give you a score of 8.5 for this section. That is marvelous. Isn't it cool to get that score? I bet it is. So let's move on and talk about coherence and cohesion. Your paragraph structure was, as I have already mentioned, clear and logical. I then looked at your topic sentences. These indicated expertly the central idea in each paragraph. I have therefore scored nine. That's great. So, you know, amazing, gorgeous. Lexical resource. The language meets the criteria. Natural and appropriate. This essay contains some good topic vocabulary. For example, become addicted to watching television. Become over-reliant on television for entertainment. Engagement in outdoor activities. Find it hard to play or live in harmony with others. Feel discouraged from having real interactions. And the list goes on and on because I believe that the person has done a great job in this regard as well. And you can see a wide variety of vocabulary here. The last item that we need to see what exactly the examiner has to tell us is about grammatical range and accuracy. You certainly use a good range of vocabulary, including adverb clauses, relative clauses, conditional forms, comparative and other useful constructions. So this section again achieves a maximum score, which is nine. Bravo. So I hope you have found this essay as interesting as I did. And I hope that you've enjoyed reading it and learning a lot out of it. And do not forget to smash that like button if you're intended to see more values like this. So thank you and have a great day and night wherever you are. See you later and tata for now.